Placoon ready! Uh, welcome to Goldfish on Games, where it seems an evil warlord has planted nukes all through Earth's history, and it's up to us to disarm them in the simplistically complex game. <laughs> Developed and published by Vulcan Software back in 1995, this was part of Vulcan's mini-series, which was the branding they gave a number of their good quality but cheaper games that had a smaller box to match. Though this box does leave something to be desired, as the text on the back is barely readable. Inside the box we get an order form where we can buy more Vulcan games, which was actually important to them as they tended to work more as a mail order company than trying to get their games into the shops. The game itself came on just two floppy disks, and they also included a small but serviceable manual that gives you the overview of the plot and the basics of how to play the game. But the story is reiterated in a nice little quick intro that had full speech, which was a bit of a signature of Vulcan games, and it lets us know that 20 nukes have been set up by the warlord Wilhelm, and it's up to the timekeepers to save the day as the bombs have been set up all throughout history or at least four different time zones. This is a job for the timekeepers. And at the start of each time zone we get 20 timekeepers, and it is our job to guide them to the exit, while keeping them alive long enough that they can disarm those pesky bombs. And after a quick rundown of the land we're about to start we get told, Placoon ready! Which results in your timekeepers teleporting into the level. And when they're all ready, they'll start moving together as a team. And on the first level, there isn't anything bad in the starting area, but that won't always be the case. Being an elite force, your soldiers will blindly follow any commands that you give them, such as being able to change their direction, interacting with the environment, which includes buttons, or even use a horn that will call a bird that will move you around the map. You can jump over things like pipes and lava. Or even be aggressive with the local inhabitants. Which on the first level will result in the internet's favourite pastime, the shouting match. But this one at least ends with an actual winner. It is our job to direct them from the starting location to the exit, very much like Lemmings, but done in a top down style that Vulcan were well known for. In similar fashion to Lemmings, when you start a level it's good to check it out and see what you're going to be going up against, and you'll quickly find that all the maps tend to be quite tall, and full of things that will block or kill our little people. So it's typically best to plan out how you're going to get one of them to the exit and then try and get the rest to follow, but it won't always be that easy. Thankfully the first level is relatively straightforward. We start off by directing a keeper to go left and then press this button. We can then get him past this obstacle which will lower and then we can jump over this pipe. We then go up through a mostly empty level. This is the first one after all so it is a lot simpler, but we do have to jump over this lava which will kill us. Then we can jump over this pipe and then quickly make a beeline away from the native and then we can go straight to the exit. And with the basic plan in place let's get our scout to follow it. And after pressing the button we can then direct him into the main route which he goes past that blocker, he travels up the level and he continues to go. Thankfully, in this one, all you got to do is place the initial icons, but in other levels you will have to guide him through many different traps and tricks to get him to the exit, and the route that he takes might be different to what all the other keepers take. And with the scout happily in the exit, all you got to do is place a few extra arrows to make the rest of them follow the path. The scariest part of any level is the very start, 
where you have to quickly identify any hazards in the starting area and direct your keepers away from them, and with that done the game becomes a far more leisurely affair. This is helped by the fact that the game is grid based, and only one soldier can be in a square. As such, there's no guesswork where you've got to place the icons, which means you can lay out your entire plan before sending a single keeper to follow it. And if two soldiers do try to enter a square, then one of them will turn around and go in the opposite direction. Thankfully, there's the delay timer, which can be useful for trying to set the flow. As mentioned earlier, there are four lands that you'll have to work through, and each of them have 15 levels. So there's a massive 60 levels in total that you're going to have to deal with, and these worlds are made up of Hieronymus land set in the distant 2 million BC, it contains lots of grass, lava, pipes, as well as the green men of Shoutsville. Medieval land set in 2045, in which you'll have to travel around old castles and face knights that can take multiple attacks, and not to mention the odd drawbridge. Vietnam land, set in 1966, where you'll have to work around swamps, armed locals and barely visible mines. And finally, space land, set in the distant future of 2001. Here awaits aliens that will kill you, spaceships that will help you get around, and airlocks that will blow you into space. As you can imagine, there are plenty of tricks, traps and obstacles in the levels that you'll have to deal with, like the rail cart that will only allow for travel in one direction. Or doors that will only allow a single keeper past. These force you to come up with different routes to get your whole team across the map, so you'll end up having to send one or two scouts to set up the path for the rest to follow. Keeping the platoon alive is your main goal, as you only get to carry on to the next level those you have saved. Now it might seem like a good idea just to rescue one or two keepers per level, but you're going to run into trouble when you hit the last level in each world, as you're going to need to have at least one keeper per bomb to be able to disarm all of them at the same time, because if you don't, you cannot complete the level. And if it turns out you don't have enough, you're going to have to go back to an earlier level and then redo it from that point all the way to the end again, to make sure you have enough troops to save the world. And keeping them alive isn't the easiest task, because unless you direct them away they will happily walk into lava, fall down holes, or even get attacked by the local natives. and not to mention all the other environmental hazards that you'll come across as you play. And when they do die, their portrait will close on the HUD, so even if you're not watching them at the time, you can tell when one of them has met an unfortunate end. Amazingly, for an Amiga game of this era, there was no copy protection or crazy disc formats. If you wanted to install the game to a hard drive, all you had to do was copy the disc contents to a folder. And if you found those 60 levels went by way too quickly, then there's good news for you, there was the Timekeeper's expansion disc, which added 60 brand new levels to the game. But these were across the original four worlds. But the game did receive a few graphical changes, such as the HUD, as well as the Keepers themselves. But the tiles for the levels, well they remained mostly the same. Back in 2004, Vulcan Software made their return, and part of that mission was to bring back some of their popular games, which included Timekeepers. This new version was released for Windows XP, but plays fine on modern Win 10. It will also only play in a window, but the whole game does run at a higher resolution than the original. In keeping with the Vulcan Software roots, you can only get this from their own website, but they have done it in a shareware-like fashion that you can get the first land for free. The other seven worlds, yes this includes all the expansion levels, can be bought individually or as packs. Unfortunately the little animations that were in the original are now gone, and it seems that the plot also got tweaked, as Lord Wilhelm 
is gone and has been replaced with Emperor Zorg. I'm not sure all the UI changes were necessarily for the best, as there's a lot of unmarked icons, but it is great to see a developer update their own work. So that was the simplistically complex puzzle game that I think we should all play. And until next time, I was the Goldfish, those were the Keepers of Time, and this was Goldfish on Games. We're on the big well this is a bit embarrassing, it seems the Time Keepers have teleported me back to the beginning of this video. Damn you Time Keepers! And the only way I can escape this time loop is if you like, subscribe or leave a comment down below. Or you can just check out the videos you can see on the screen right now.